This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In order for us to start to use our VBA to manipulate actual cells and objects within the Excel file itself, we really need to look at the range object. The range object will allow us to select ranges and manipulate their values or their properties. Now the range is a built-in object within your VBA. And because it's a built-in object, it will have a set of properties that we can explore and a set of methods that allow us to work with the object. So taking the range object, let's just explore how we use it. We declare the range object by just typing range. And if we open brackets, open speech marks, we can then reference a physical range on the current worksheet. A5 colon G78, close speech marks, close brackets. And that will reference the range A5 to G78 on the current worksheet that we are currently in. So depending on where we are in our VBA statement. Now you can use the range statement as we've done there to reference a range of cells, or we can use it to reference a single cell. And we'd use the same object, the range object, range on brackets, open speech marks, G54, close speech marks, close brackets, and that will refer to a single cell on the current worksheet. We can even use the range object to reference named ranges. So if you use names a lot in Excel, we can use those names in the VBA. Just type the name of the named area. Named range, close speech marks, close brackets. Don't forget that closing off of everything. We can use the range object to reference entire columns. So we can reference E colon E, close speech marks, close brackets, and that will reference the whole of column E, right from E1, right down to E1,048,576. Logically, we can reference a whole row. So we want the whole of row two. We open our speech marks, two, colon two, close speech marks, close brackets, and that's the whole of row two, from A2 right through to XFD2. Now these ranges that are referring to columns or rows don't have to refer to a single column or a single row. We can say E colon G, and that will refer to the whole of column E, whole of column F, and whole of column G. So you can reference consecutive columns, and the same with rows. You can say row two to row four, and it will reference all three rows, row two, row three, and row four. Now, these ranges, as they are at the moment, reference whatever range we've selected on the current worksheet. If we want to reference a range that's on a different worksheet, then we need to prefix the range object with the worksheets object. So it's worksheets, open brackets, open speech marks, name, so it's sheet two, dot, range. And now we're referring to a range on worksheet two. Let's go from G5 to H98. Don't forget all that closing off. You'll know if you've done it right because the title casing changes. So range becomes in title case and worksheets is in title case. Taking the logic a little step further, we can reference a range not only on any other worksheet in the current workbook, but actually another workbook. So I can say workbooks, which is a collection. Don't forget the open brackets, open speech marks. Then the name of the file, guy file two, dot. And you notice because it's a collection, the dot brings me all the objects and methods that work with workbooks. Well, we're looking for worksheets because I've now referenced another file, another workbook, and then I need to reference the worksheet within that book. And then within that worksheet, I need to reference the range, which might happen to be G6 to G98. So you can see we can make references to an area of a worksheet by defining which worksheet, if it's not the current one, and which workbook, if it's not the current one. We can even use the range to reference non-consecutive sections, just as you can in Excel. If you use a formula on non-consecutive areas, you can use the control key to add in further areas, or we can use the range object to do a similar job, open our speech marks and say, well, we want everything from A1 to Y89, but we also want, so we put a comma, T98 to UV67, and we also want Z45 to Z96. 
then you close your speaks marks, then you close your brackets. So each range is just separated by a comma within the range object. Be a little bit careful when using non-consecutive ranges because some methods and some actions will not work and you could cause your code to crash. Most of the time, it's actually easier to create three separate range objects, one for that area, one for that area, and one for that area, because it's then easier to work with with whatever you're trying to do, obviously. Mechanically, you can reference these non-consecutive ranges. So this is the range object, vitally important, we'll be using it a lot, and it's your way of telling the code which parts of the Excel file you're wanting to manipulate at that moment in time.